Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about the thermodynamic process. Thermodynamic process is an operation by which a system at an equilibrium state can be changed to another state and equilibrium. And there are many processes to do that. So in this video, we are going to see all the process by which a system at an equilibrium state can be changed to another state and equilibrium. So let's start. There are many processes in thermodynamics that are used to change a system from one state of equilibrium to another state of equilibrium. But the most frequently used processes are isothermal process, isobaric process, isochoric process. adiabatic process and five number is cyclic process so these are the five processes that are frequently encountered in thermodynamics so we are going to see about these process one by one let's start from isothermal process Isothermal process is the process in which the temperature of the system remains constant. That means the temperature do not change. Let me write that. The temperature remains, remains same. That is, that is dt is equal to 0. dt means change in temperature. And this type of process happens in thermostat. Okay. Let us consider there is a thermostat in which the substance is put. This is the system. Okay. See, I have told you the temperature should not change. But to maintain the temperature, there might be exchange of heat energy between the system and the surrounding. Okay. If you don't know about system and surrounding, then please check the link in the description below. I have put the video over there. Now, here the reaction is happening. And suppose this is the exothermic reaction then what happens exothermic reaction means heat energy will produce in the reaction itself and the temperature should increase but to keep the uh, temperature constant the heat energy is absorbed by the surrounding okay the heat energy is absorbed by the surrounding to keep the temperature constant in the another case let us consider the reaction happening inside the system is endothermic now it uh, endothermic means obviously the temperature will decrease. Now in order to balance the temperature, it needs heat energy and that heat energy is supplied by, yes, you are correct, that heat energy is supplied by the surrounding. It is supplied by the surrounding. This is for exothermic, exothermic reaction and this is for endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction this is heat energy going out this is heat energy coming in okay so let me write that over here temperature the temperature the temperature change is balanced balanced by exchange exchange of heat between between system and surrounding system and surrounding for exothermal for exothermal process for exothermal process heat is absorbed by surrounding it is absorbed by surrounding because in exothermal process the temperature increases and that heat energy extra heat energy is absorbed by the surrounding to keep the temperature constant similarly for endothermic process 
for endothermic process the heat is provided by the surrounding by the surrounding we know that in endothermic process the temperature decreases and it needs energy in order to maintain the temperature and that energy or that heat energy is provided by the surrounding so that the temperature inside the thermostat will remain the same now these are the two points that you must remember now another thing about isothermal process is that in isothermal process boyle's law can be applied so for isothermal process for isothermal process boyle's law boyle's law is applicable applicable the boyle's law states that the product of pressure and volume remains constant in case of isothermal process the product of pressure and volume of the system remains constant in case of isothermal process so this can be written as p1 v1 will be equal to p2 v2 and this is what we call the boyle's law okay these both are the boyle's law and boyle's law is only applicable for isothermal process now let's uh, see how the process happens in graphical form okay let's make a graph over here this is p and this is v as the temperature is not changing but pressure and volume might change so if the pressure decreases the volume obviously will increase so in isothermal process we get a curve like this if we plot pressure against volume so this is what isothermal process actually is in which the temperature should not change but heat energy can be exchanged to balance the temperature now let's see another process that is isobaric process In isobaric process or isopistic process, the pressure in the system remains constant. Let me write that the pressure, the pressure remains same. That is, dP will be equal to zero. Now, this type of process happens in a cylinder having weightless and frictionless piston. Let us consider a cylinder. in which there is the substance under study and there is this weightless and frictionless piston this is the weightless and frictionless piston this can move up and down easily okay now in this process the pressure remains constant okay so this piston sometimes moves up sometimes moves down in order to maintain the pressure that depends on the change in volume of the system got confused let me clear that let us take an example of hydrogen and chlorine gas reacting with each other so when hydrogen and chlorine are reacting suppose in the cylinder there is hydrogen and chlorine in 1 is to 1 ratio so one mole of hydrogen one mole of chlorine and if they react they will form two mole of hcl yeah they will form two mole of hcl so there are total two mole of reactant and two mole of product so will the volume change no the volume will not change so in this particular case the piston will not move as the pressure is not changing because we know that if volume changes then only the pressure changes if the volume do not change then the pressure will not change and this process will easily happen without uh, the piston moving up or down but what if we have we take another reaction that means there is hydrogen and oxygen okay there is hydrogen and oxygen in the cylinder and we provide electric spark to that electric spark we provide we provide electric spark then what will happen it will form h2o that is water molecule right to balance we have to put two over here and two over here what do we see from here is that 2 plus 1 3 mole of reactant is forming only 2 mole of product so the volume is decreasing that means this piston will come here now as the volume is decreasing this piston volume decreases to maintain the pressure the piston also comes down okay if the volume is decreasing to maintain the to maintain the equal pressure the piston comes down 
so in that particular case the piston will now come here in order to maintain the pressure okay similarly let's take another example that is dinitrogen tetroxide is giving nitrogen dioxide and if we react we get this so one mole of dinitrogen tetroxide gives two mole of uh, nitrogen dioxide then what happens the volume is increasing now this volume will increase right so in order to maintain the pressure the piston moves up the push piston now moves up did you understand what i'm what i just said to maintain the pressure equal the piston sometime moves up sometime moves down if the volume inside the system remains same then the piston will not move and if the volume inside the system decreases the piston comes down and if the volume inside the piston increases then the piston will go up and this is all for maintaining equal pressure okay so uh, let me write it to maintain to maintain constant pressure to maintain constant pressure the piston the piston moves moves up and down down okay now similarly in third step in graphical form in graph the isobaric process or isopistic process if we plot pressure against volume then it will show a graph like this we know that the pressure will not change even if the volume increases or decreases the piston will balance that and the pressure will not change and we get a graph like this so this is what isobaric or isopistic process actually is in which the pressure remains constant and to maintain the pressure the piston moves up and down but the piston must be weightless and frictionless that is the criteria okay so i hope you understood about isobaric process now let's understand the isochoric process in isochoric process the volume of the system remains same let me write that the volume remains constant the volume remains constant that is dv will be equal to zero and this type of process happens in a cylinder with fixed piston the piston do not move up and down so let us consider a system in which the substance is put over here the substance is put over here and this piston is fixed this is a fixed piston that is it will not go up it will not come down the reaction happens suppose the reaction happens over here now let us consider the volume increased okay let us consider the volume is increasing now the piston is supposed to go up but as it is fixed it cannot go up now to maintain that equal volume the pressure inside the system also increases so that the volume would not change similarly in a reaction in which the volume is supposed to decrease the pressure also decreases so that the volume will remain constant so in this type of process fixed piston is used that is fixed piston should not move at all so the piston the piston is fixed fixed to maintain to maintain constant volume constant volume if volume increases if volume increases then pressure also increases then pressure also increases to keep the volume constant constant similarly similarly when volume 
decreases when volume decreases the pressure also decreases to keep the volume constant so pressure increases or decreases to keep the volume constant and this is called the isochoric process graphically graphically this process can be represented like this that is in this process we get this type of graph when we plot p and v pv graph then we get a graph like this even if the pressure increases or decreases the volume will always remain the same okay that's why a fixed piston is used over there i hope you understood what isochoric process actually is now let's see the adiabatic process in adiabatic process the boundary is adiabatic that means the system and the surrounding is separated by an adiabatic wall that does not allow the uh, heat and matter to exchange between them let us consider a system which is separated from the surrounding by an adiabatic wall this is an adiabatic wall adiabatic wall okay so in this what happens the heat energy the heat energy of the system remains same remains same so what happens as this is an adiabatic wall then there won't there won't be the exchange of energy or matter between the system and the surrounding that means neither energy nor matter can uh, leave out the system or neither energy nor matter can come to the system from the surrounding okay so this actually happens over here now let us consider uh, an exothermic process is happening inside the system then what happens in exothermic process there is very much heat heat energy right now that needs to go out and that cannot go out and to balance that heat energy the temperature increases okay to balance that heat energy to keep the heat energy of the system constant the temperature increases similarly in case of endothermic reaction there should it should get heat energy right so heat energy will decrease in case of endothermic reaction and to keep that heat energy constant the temperature of the system decreases but it does not either take or give the heat energy to the surrounding that is the work of adiabatic wall that does not allow it to do so so let me write that uh, to keep to keep the heat energy of the system constant constant the temperature the temperature either increases or decreases in case of in case of exothermic process the heat energy the heat energy of the system system decreases decreases and to maintain to maintain constant heat to maintain constant heat the temperature the temperature also decreases the temperature also decreases similar similar thing happens happens in endothermic process endothermic process so in endothermic process the heat energy of the system decreases and to maintain that heat energy constant the temperature of the system also decreases but there is no exchange of heat and matter between the system and the surrounding okay and graphically if we see this process then we get a graph like this 
the graph is little bit similar to the isothermal process but it is more steeper than the isothermal process so for adiabatic process we get a graph like this because pressure and volume will obviously change and we get similar type of graph as in the isothermal process but this is more steeper than that one i hope you understood everything about adiabatic process now let's see the last one and one of the most important one that is the cyclic process if a thermodynamic process happens in such a way that after a series of change of state the system comes back to its original state then that type of process is called the cyclic process let me write that if the thermodynamic process happens happens in such a manner that in such a manner that after a series of change of state the system the system comes back to its original original state such process is called cyclic process and this is the same process that happens in carnot cycle as well <coughs> graphically if we see we get a graph like this suppose this is the starting point then either by expansion or compression let's uh we get a graph like this then we get another graph another graph and finally this uh, this ends on the same state as it was originally so the process might happen in this way it starts from here and after a series of change of its state it reaches there again so this type of process is called the cyclic process now in cyclic process in cyclic process the total the total energy sorry the total change in change in internal energy internal energy of the system is constant is constant sorry the total change in internal energy is zero is zero that means in a complete cycle the internal energy will be constant that is de will be equal to how much zero change in internal energy will be zero similarly one more uh, thing happen over there that is the change the change in enthalpy enthalpy is also zero so in complete process the change in enthalpy will also be zero so these are the two things that happen in a cyclic process so in this video we talked about five process they are isothermal isobaric isochoric adiabatic and cyclic process you need to understand all these process in order to understand the thermodynamic process properly so that's all in this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video